Which then brings us to facing fear. And I have to say, um, I don't enjoy facing fear. <laughs> Even this morning, as I was getting ready to come over here and feeling a little anxiety about it, I thought, um, OK, got to face my fear. Uh, it, it, it's not easy to do. You know, we all walk around with vulnerability. We all walk around with anxiety. We don't know how we're going to be received. We don't know how um, people will respond to us. We don't know how we'll meet all our needs, etc. So we're always vulnerable. And therefore, we always face the challenge of facing fear. But I want to start with Psalm 23, because I feel like if anything were to reassure us uh, that we do not face our fears alone, perhaps it's these words. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So we're never alone, even at the darkest times. In this season of Lent, I find it um, meaningful to reflect on some of the experience that Jesus seemed to have had. Um, and even, perhaps, in the area of facing fear. So this powerful passage from Matthew. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Was that fear? It, it seems so, that Jesus in his full humanity was terrified, perhaps, of what awaited him. And yet he faced the fear, surrendering to God's will, trusting God's will. And so I want to say the cross, and in a particular way, sometimes the crucifix, may be a deeply meaningful symbol when we need to face our fears and try to hope and trust in God's merciful love. Christ knows the fears that we are facing. Christ is with us as we face our fears. And Christ beckons from beyond the cross of fears and suffering as our hopeful story of life in him continues. And then, of course, the importance of light as a symbol, as a metaphor, as an image of facing fears. So the, these beautiful words from John 8. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So our faith is inviting us to hope, to trust, that whatever the darkness we face, it can never fully envelop us. Even in the darkest of times, we try to trust that Christ's light is there. And I think again of our ancestors in faith who had their fears, who had their struggles, and have wisdom for us. So this beautiful prayer of Teresa of Avila. Uh, Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever possesses God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. 
whatever is swirling around us, and we live in swirling times, God is constant in love and mercy.